Abolishing the Penny Makes Good Sense by Alan S. Blender An economist rarely has the opportunity to recommend a policy change that benefits 200 million people, imposes costs on virtually no one, and saves the government money to boot. But I have such a suggestion to offer the nation as a holiday gift. Let's abolish the penny. Yes, the old copperhead has outlived its usefulness and is by now a public nuisance, something akin to the gnat. Pennies get in the way when we make change. They add unwanted weight to our pockets and purses. Few people nowadays even bend down to pick a penny off the sidewalk. Doesn't that prove that mining and minting copper into pennies is wasteful? Today, if it rained pennies from heaven, only a fool would turn his umbrella upside down. The money caught would be worth less than the ruined umbrella. I have been anti-penny for years, but final proof came about two years ago. I used to dump pennies into a shoebox. Eventually, I accumulated several hundred. Dismayed by the ever-growing collection of useless copper, I offered the box to my son, William, then eight, warning him that the bank would take the pennies only if he neatly wrapped them in rolls of fifty. William, obviously a keen, intuitive economist, thought the matter over carefully for about two seconds before responding, Thanks, Dad, but it's not worth it. If it's not worth the time of an eight-year-old to wrap pennies, why does the U.S. government keep producing the things? $91 billion in circulation. More than the time of eight-year-olds is involved. Think how often you have waited in line while the customer ahead of you fumbled through their pockets or purses for a few exempl ex expletive-deleted pennies. A trivial problem? Yes, until you multiply your wasted seconds by the billions of cash transactions that take place in our economy each year. I estimate that all this penny pinching wastes several hundred million hours annually. Valuing that at, say, $10 an hour adds up to $7 billion per year, which is more than enough to justify this column. We also must consider the cost of minting and maintaining the penny supply. There are roughly 91 billion pennies circulating, and every year, the U.S. Treasury produces 12 billion to 14 million billion more, at the cost of about $19 million. Since this expenditure just produces a nuisance for society, it should be at the top of everyone's list of budget cuts. There are no coherent objections to abolishing the penny. It has been claimed, apparently, with a straight face, that eliminating, eliminating pennies would be inflammatory or inflationary, because all those $39.99 prices would rise to $40. Apart from the fact that such, such increases would be penny ante, the claim itself is ludicrous. A price of price such as $39.99 is designed to keep a four from appearing as the first digit, something a retailer deems psychologically important. In a penniless society, merchants probably would change the number to $39.95, not raise it to $40. Even if only one-fifth of all merchants reacted this way, abolishing the penny would be disinflationary. Sales tax pose a problem. How would a penny-free economy cope with, for instance, a 7% sales tax on a $31 purchase, which comes to $2.17? The average leads, or the answer leads to the second part of my suggestion. Let all states and localities amend the sales tax to round all tax bills to the next highest nickel. In the example, the state would collect $2.20 instead of $2.17. The customer would lose three cents, but if my previous arguments are correct, would actually be better off without the pennies. What other tax leaves the taxpayer happier for having rid of it or having paid it? Sentimental value. Only tradition explains our stubborn attachment to the penny. But sometimes, traditions get ridiculous. Surely, the smallest currency unit a country uses should be related to its average income. Yet, countries with lower standards of living than the United States have minimum currency units worth more than one cent, while we have been minting the penny for two centuries. Even England, a tradition bound, as tradition-bound a nation as they come, is more progressive in this matter than the United States. Years ago, the smallest unit of British currency was the farthing, equal to one quarter of what was then called a penny. As England grew richer, the farthing gave way to the half penny, then to the old penny, and finally to the new penny, which is the equivalent of 9.6 farthings. During the same time, all the stodgy United States did was abolish the half penny. Surely, the penny has sentimental value. 
That motivates the last part of my suggestion. Rather than call in all the pennies and melt them, which would be too expensive and perhaps heartrending, the government should simply announce that it is demonetizing the penny as of next January and let collectors m take many of the pesky coppers out of circulation. After hobbyists and investors accumulated whatever stockpiles they desired, the rest would could be redeemed by the government, wrapped neatly in rolls of 50, of course. Let's be penny-wise and abolish the one-cent piece. The idea is so logical, so obviously correct, that I'm sure the new Congress will enact it during its first days in office.